Edward Snowden, an American whistleblower who worked as a Central Intelligence Agency employee and subcontractor for the United States National Security Agency, leaked documents highlighting the scale of information gathered and the tactics used to influence outcomes. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three of Edward Snowden's leaked files. The Art of Deception Edward Snowden's February 2014 leaked document, The Art of Deception, Training for a New Generation of Online Covert Operations Released, was a PowerPoint presentation including 50 slides reportedly made by GCHQ, the British Government Communications Headquarters, in 2012. The presentation was allegedly used for staff training, an online covert action accreditation, from the Human Science Operations Cell and Joint Threat Research Intelligence Group that draws from psychology of influence and persuasion and included digital propaganda tactics. The presentation mentions building cyber magicians who can confuse and manipulate targets. One slide includes a roadmap of how their tactics fit together, a guide to practice. It builds upon culture profiling, cognitive biases, scams, propaganda and more. In the Gambits for Deception slide, Psychology of Magic Tricks is heavily drawn from in the Attention section. The document is filled with theories on human interaction, how to understand it and game it, influencing outcomes. The document lists techniques for hiding the real, dissimulation through masking, repackaging and dazzling, and showing the false, simulation through mimicking, inventing and decoying. This section includes three slides showing UFOs, amongst other unrelated images, believed to be referencing the influencing of UFO cults rather than the presence of UFOs. Nigel Watson, author of the Haynes UFO Investigations Manual, says that while the slides may not be evidence of alien invaders, they are the next best thing for conspiracy theorists, evidence of government mind control. The section also includes the phrase People make decisions as part of groups. People make decisions for emotional reasons, not rational ones. The presentation concludes with a full rollout of the training planned, with over 150 JTRIG known as Joint Threat Research Intelligence Group and Ops staff fully trained by early 2013. Glenn Greenwald, an American journalist and author, wrote an article for The Intercept regarding the leaked documents. He stated that the presentation showed there were core self-identified purposes of JTRIG including two tactics. One, to inject all sorts of false material onto the internet in order to destroy the reputation of its targets. And two, to use social sciences and other techniques to manipulate online discourse and activism to generate outcomes it considers desirable. An order from the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court to Verizon instructing them to hand over all metadata for all US customer phone calls. One of the first items Snowden leaked in 2013 was a secret court order from the US Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, known as FISA, instructing Verizon to turn over metadata from all calls originating in the US over a three-month period, ending the 19th of July 2013, to the National Security Agency known as the NSA on a daily basis. A note on the order says it's supposed to have remained classified until April 2038. The report was released on The Guardian, written by Glenn Greenwald. According to the document, telephony metadata includes comprehensive communications routing information, including but not limited to session identifying information. For example, originating and terminating telephone number, international mobile subscriber identity number, international mobile station equipment identity number, and time and duration of call. It noted that the telephony metadata does not include the substantive content of any communication or the name, address, or financial information of a subscriber or customer. The document also instructs Verizon not to tell anyone about the court order. While the Verizon court order is the one that was leaked, AT&T and Sprint were also reported to have given their records to the NSA. The leaked court order has raised a series of questions. 
The main question being, is this a one-off or from a series of similar orders? Also, to what extent does the US government have domestic spying powers? The blanket gathering of records is unusual compared with normal FISA court orders. Usually, these are aimed directly at a named target, for example one that is of interest for suspected terrorist links. While the data does not include substantive content of communication, there is enough data to build an accurate picture of who was contacted, when, how, and where. According to the Washington Post, NSA analysts may not search the records without reasonable, articulable suspicion that the data is related to a specific terrorism case. Only a small fraction of the records are reviewed, officials said. The law used to gain the order is the Business Records Provision of the Patriot Act, 50 U.S.C. Section 1861. U.S. Senators Ron Wyden and Mark Udall had reportedly been warning about the interpretation of this act without being able to specify the domestic surveillance programs they found alarming. In a letter to Attorney General Eric Holder in 2012, the U.S. Senators stated, As we see it, there is now a significant gap between what most Americans think the law allows and what the government secretly claims the law allows. This is a problem, because it is impossible to have an informed public debate about what the law should say when the public doesn't know what its government thinks the law says. The 2013 Verizon data grab is similar to a program that was authorized by the Bush administration in 2001 and reported by USA Today in 2006, which implemented the collection of phone call records to analyze call patterns to detect any forbidden activity. The 2013 court order is the first hint that the Obama administration has followed a similar path. The Washington Post noted that the government made six requests under the business records provision of the Patriot Act in 2007 during the Bush administration, 21 in 2009, Obama's first year in office, and 212 last year, according to reports to Congress. However, it is not known how many are in the same style as the Verizon request. The NSA program PRISM, which allows the NSA to monitor people's email, web searches, and overall internet use. Following the Verizon scandal, Edward Snowden released details of the NSA program PRISM. PRISM is a tool used by the US NSA to collect private electronic data belonging to users of major internet services such as Gmail, Facebook, Outlook, and others. It is believed to involve the cooperation of at least nine technology companies, with these companies giving direct access to their systems. The leaked document contains a slide that records the date each company allegedly joined PRISM. Another showed the type of data collected, which included email, chat messages, videos, photos, file transfers, and more. Google released a blog post, which stated, we have not joined any program that would give the US government or any other government direct access to our servers. The US government does not have direct access to the information stored in our data centers. We had not heard of a program called PRISM until yesterday. We provide user data to governments only in accordance with the law. Our legal team reviews each and every request and frequently pushes back when requests are overly broad or don't follow the correct process. Press reports that suggest that Google is providing open-ended access to our users' data are false. Yahoo and Apple both went on to give similar statements. An Apple spokesman said it has never heard of PRISM. Yahoo released a statement saying, Yahoo has not joined any program in which we volunteer to share user data with the US government. We do not voluntarily disclose user information. Facebook, while denying being part of PRISM and giving direct access to the NSA, released data regarding all national security requests in a bid to be more open. The company stated that for six months, ending December 31, 2012, the total number of user data requests Facebook received from any and all government entities in the US was between 9,000 and 10,000. According to the Financial Times, in the wake of Snowden's revelations, the Obama administration defended the way it obtains private communications. 
James Clapper, the Director of National Intelligence, issued a statement to defend the practice, stating, Information collected under this program is among the most important and valuable foreign intelligence information we collect, and is used to protect our nation from a wide variety of threats. Robot dogs may be armed with weapons. In times of conflict, the lives of those fighting should be preserved as much as possible. With the addition of weaponry to robotic dogs, a great number of lives could be saved, inflicting the damage upon a series of complex wires and mechanics instead. Quadrupedal robots, or robots with four legs, have been relatively recent developments in the field of robotics. While many of us have heard news reports of police robot dogs and surveillance guard dogs, this takes it up to a whole new level. Of course, the four-legged and not-so-furry friends make the ideal robots for armies. They are small and compact, quick and agile, and are able to navigate uneven terrains that robots and machines with wheels simply would not be able to hack. Now, however, these robots are fully equipped for combat as they have been fitted with firearms of their own. Vision 60 Unit, a weaponized robot dog built by the US company Ghost Robotics, is all kitted out with a weapon, custom-made and attached, with the weapon coming from the small arms specialists Sword International. The weapon itself is the Spur, and is designed to be a fixture you can fit to various platforms. Not only is the Spur a firearm, but this frightening weaponry is also decked out with a 30x optical zoom, a thermal camera, allowing the robot dog to aim and attack in the dark, and has a range of 1,200 meters. This is dangerous enough as it is, but it has now been fitted to a mobile robotic dog. Technology has already come under enough criticism without being attached. With the recent nature of this research, word coming out in the autumn of 2021, it is yet to be determined whether Sword International, the company, or Ghost Robotics, the robotics company, are selling this terrifying duo. The US military are already trialing out the quadrupedal device, though we are yet to confirm any details regarding the depth of the partnership and collaboration between Ghost Robotics and Sword International. The CEO of Ghost Robotics, Jiren Parik, says that the 325th Security Forces Squadron at Tyndall Air Force Base in Florida have been the first unit in the Department of Defense to employ these robot dogs. So far, the unweaponized versions have been in use for approximately a year. They have been making their way through swampy land areas that have been deemed undesirable for human beings and vehicles. The most famous company for producing robot dogs is Boston Dynamics, and their most famous creation spot was met with some controversy. In an effort to regulate the rapidly advancing technology, Boston Dynamics has a policy against allowing their machines to become weapons, though it seems that not all manufacturers have this outlook. What do you think? Is this responsible creation or a futile policy when you consider the huge lengths this technology has already gone to. A great deal of this technology is still in the testing and development phases. Whilst these new tips and tricks would certainly mark significant milestones in our progress as a species, being able to develop all this new tech successfully, we are still a long way from the dystopian wasteland our sci-fi novels predict we will be left with once they fall into mainstream use. Is this technology going too far? Are we employing robots, lasers, and force fields in places where they are just not needed? We will let you decide. Jeff Bezos unveils plans for Space Business Park It seems that with every passing day, humanity looks to space more and more as a viable possibility for life and work, and space tourism company Blue Origin, owned by the world's richest man Jeff Bezos, announced that it has plans to partner with Sierra Space and Boeing to open a commercial space station called Orbital Reef within the next 10 years. The station will function as a space outpost of sorts that can be employed for a variety of different purposes, including filmmaking, research, or tourism, and includes a space hotel that can host up to 10 people. According to the press conference, the Orbital Reef will be over 9,700 square meters and is guaranteed to cost an astonishing amount, although exact numbers have yet to be released. This announcement comes on the tails of NASA's own announcement that they are looking for commercial proposals that would replace the aging International Space Station, which has fallen into disrepair. Although there is likely going to be stiff competition for the $400 million grant NASA will award to the winning proposal, 
It is unclear whether Bezos and Blue Origin are planning the orbital reef in order to pitch to NASA, or as a competitor for whichever company wins the privatized contract for a commercial space station. Earlier this year, they were skipped over by NASA for a $2.9 billion contract that was awarded to SpaceX, owned by fellow billionaire Elon Musk, allowing the rival space billionaire to gain significant ground as a competitor in the race to privatize space. As it stands, Blue Origin has already gained significant media attention for its recent launch of owner Jeff Bezos and other civilians into space on the new Shepard rocket, as well as for accusations of concerns brought to light by former employees. Although this negative publicity is what caused them to lose out on the earlier contract with NASA, it appears that Bezos is moving forward with his space tourism schemes in spite of the negative publicity, with the announcement of the orbiting commercial business park coming despite accusations that the billionaires are selfishly pouring their limitless wealth into vanity projects that battle for the monopolization of space rather than assisting with the looming climate crisis down here on Earth. However, for now, all we can do is wait and see how the battle between NASA and the billionaires focused on the cosmos pans out. But what do you make of these discoveries and announcements? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.